Good evening, welcome to Late Night Data Science with Bruno. Uh, I was experimenting with some stuff. Um, so in, on my previ in my previous video, I um, was trying things with uh, you know functional programming and uh, large data, how you could and uh, you know lists. Um, and I was copying data inside a list, and I realized that it wasn't using more memory uh, actually it wasn't using any more memory at all and so I thought uh, that it maybe had something to do with the list just pointing towards the individual data frames instead of copying inside each element of the list the data again and uh, it turns out that uh, on Twitter um, someone posted a link towards the advanced R book from Hadley Wickham where this is e explained so the intuition was correct and so I continued playing uh, with with uh, so I, I had an idea while at work today and um, I tried it out and it looks interesting so um, let me know what you think I'm going to show you something that I think is quite interesting let me kill R and start with a fresh with a fresh session and um, I will explain what I'm doing. Um, so, still working on the uh, Enron, uh, the infamous Enron collection of uh, Excel files. And this time I'm loading uh, 3,000, or I will load 3,000 spreadsheets. So I think there's 15,000 in total. Uh, but I'm going to load uh, 3,000 spreadsheets and I already put them inside a data frame or a table with only one column. So you see there's one column called paths, which is, you know, each row, each element of this column is a path towards this Excel. What I want to do is something very simple. I just want for each of these, I want to read them in with uh, XLS X cells with this function over here. Oh, let me, sorry, let me zoom in. Um, I think that will make things easier. So this is my data frame over here on the right, which for now has only one column with the paths to the data frames. And I want <coughs> to um, read that with SLSX cells. And then I just want to get the rows, you know, something very simple, very uh, unrealistic as well, because I don't think there's something very useful, but it will illustrate my point. So let's look at my RAM. Uh, so I start my session, I uh, just created this table with 3000 paths and I'm at 2.7 gigabytes of RAM usage, okay? Now let me read this data, but not evaluating it immediately. I want to quote the expression. So what this thing here will, let's, let me show you what this will create. Um, this thing, yeah, now because I zoomed in, but I think, yeah, you, you will see. This thing, when I run this thing, let me move my face to here. When I run this thing where I map, where I quote, sorry, the this function, I have here quotures. So I don't have a data frame yet. I only have a quoture which, uh, I don't know exactly how to explain that, but it's some kind of, it's just the expression which you can then trigger in a sense. And when you trigger that with uh, the other function called eval tidy, this will actually execute this expression, okay? So for now, it's just, let's say, a potential data frame, okay? It's not yet a data frame. Then what I do, let's go back to the source. Um, what I do is I add a new column called n rows, where I do the same trick. But, so I quote my n row, so because remember I want to calculate the number of rows, I want to count the number of rows in my data frames. But I use now eval tidy, so this here will uh, execute this quotient. Okay, so this will read in the data frame. But the result here, I quote it. So I actually, I don't even think that I need to do that. But let's, let's do it like this. I think I could, now that I'm talking about it, it's like, uh, you know, duck debugging, now that I'm telling that to you guys, I think I don't even need that. But let's, let's go with that. So I evaluate my, 
my disk closure, which will instantiate the data frame, and then I count the rows and I keep that as a closure. I keep the whole expression as a closure. Let's run this and you will see that it will run in two seconds uh, because no, nothing happened. Okay, nothing happened. If I look at DF axles, it's only for now, uh, so my, I still have my paths. I have a closure in my data frames and I have another closure in my N rows. So no computation happened. If we look at the RAM, it didn't move, right? We're still at 2.7, okay? Nothing happened. Now, let's run the code, okay? Let's, uh, let's get this N rows. So for this, I will run these lines where I will map to, to the column N rows. I will now map eval tidy. So what will this do, what this will do, rather, what this will do, this will evaluate this closure, which in turn will run this, this eval tidy call, which in turn will evaluate this closure and will thus read the data. So at this point, the, um, by, by triggering this expression, this uh, it will cascade down to this column as well and so it will read in the data and I w it will compute my uh, my rows okay so let's see what's going to happen so i have 3000 uh, excel sheets okay uh, which are some of them are quite large so my ram should move okay so let's let's see let's run so let's switch to my um to my uh, system monitor. So as you see, I, I am now already at three gigabytes. Um, so the, the code is still running, um, but you know, I'm staying around three. And in, in my experiments just before filming, I, I don't think I, it uh, moved past above three. I think it stayed around three. And this is a bit surprising. So now I'm, tr I'm at 3.2 because I'm reading in quite a lot of data, you know, um, those data frames can get quite large because if you read in these Excel files with XLS cells, what this does is that, is that it creates a data frame where each row is a cell of your Excel workbook. So if you have, for example, 10 sheets, you will have, uh, for each of those sheets, you will have a um, uh, or rather for each of the rows of the sheets you will have one row so um, in the largest for example the, ra the largest excel workbook that is in this enron data is around 40 megabytes but if i read that in with xls x cells which is a function from the tidy excel package this gives me a data frame for with um, 17 million rows so which is quite large so we're at 3.3 now so let's take a look it's still running but you know 3.3 it's very reasonable and it's not you know it's not increasing very quickly or anything um, so this seems to be something uh, that is uh, not taking a lot of, of memory which was not what i was expecting um, I mean, I, I kind of was expecting that because that's why I tried it in the first place, but I was not expecting, you, you will see when we're going to compare that to the normal way of doing it, that there's a huge difference in, in memory usage. Um, so it's still running, it's still running. Um, yeah, we're done. We're done and we have 3.3 gigabytes. So we were at 2.7, now we're at 3.3, which is really reasonable. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, DF Excels. So now I have a quotient, and now I have an integer. Actually, I could have used map int instead of map. I think I could have done that. Oh no, I could not. I could not because before those were quotients, and map int expects an integer. So I guess I would have gotten an error message. But no, no problem. We can. Uh, probably very easily convert that so if i say something like uh, and rows uh, and then uh, you know i guess map well this time let's go with map int and rows as numer numeric is that going to work i guess uh can't coerce elements from double to integer oh uh yeah so let's go with map double then yeah 
Okay, and now I got my my rows. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, okay, let's do it the uh, non quasar way. Okay, let's do it the normal way. So, which is basically running this thing. To be fair, you know, let's kill R and let's start with a fresh session. So let's look at my RAM. I'm back to 2.6 actually. So uh, yeah, I mean normal because now I will run R. It will use up some memory, I guess. So that's R. I create my table with the 3000 paths. It's done. Let me zoom in a little bit. Now I'm going to run this. So this is the normal way where you don't use closures, okay? So I just read in the data and then on the data I get my I count my rows. So we're yeah, we're back to 2.7, okay? So 2.6 just before running R, we run R, we create the data frame with the 3000 paths, we're at 2.7. Now let's run this and let's see what's uh, what's going to happen. So it's running. Okay, let's look at the RAM. So we are already at 3. 3.1, 3.2. So it's already increasing much faster. So remember, we stopped before at 3.3. That's where we stopped. Now we're already above that. We're already at 3.6. Now it kind of decreases, now it kind of increases. So as you see, it's increasing much faster. It's using much more RAM. And uh, I think what's happening I think what's happening is that when you run the code this way without quarters, your column call that is called the data frames here, so the column that holds the data frames is going to contain it, it, all of the data frames. So all of the data frames are getting instantiated and all of them are going to stay there. And this takes a lot, a lot of space. Whereas if you use quarters, I think what's happening is that because you execute them um, and the um, so the data frame only gets read in and kept in memory while you need to count the number of rows but as soon as you're done with that that goes into the garbage and then you read the next data frame so you you end up not using much space here because every data frame is being kept in memory because well I mean because that's that's what you're telling here, basically. You're saying, well, I want to keep this data frame column, right? I want to keep it there. This, as a, as a consequence, will, um, well, will will use up a lot of memory, basically. So if, if you see, we're already at 8 gigs. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure uh, I might run out of memory. Well, it will probably start using my swap at some point. But um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure at some point it will uh, it will uh, probably r eat up all of my memory. So let's kill R. I think this illustrated the point quite well. So now you see I killed R. It dropped to 2.6 again. So again, this is experimental stuff. I don't know if that's a good way of doing these things. If that's uh, a clean way and but. It certainly looks like it. I mean, it certainly looks quite interesting because what you could do here is you could you could say, well, you know, I want to use this nice this nice uh, tidyverse syntax. Don't want to use uh, I don't want to use dirty loops or anything. I want to use this nice syntax, but uh, I don't want to you know I don't want to I, I don't want to to not have any RAM anymore. So I want to be able to do stuff. So this way. I can, for example, count my rows, I can count how many formulas there are in the workbook. So, for example, I could say, well, instead of counting rows, I count formulas. Because if you look, um, actually, let's, let me show you how, how one data frame looks like. I think that's, uh, that's, that's interesting to see. If you look at what a data frame looks like, if you read it with um, Excel, uh, what's the function? XLS cells if you look at one data frame uh, list excels one if you look at one data frame you have so for example this one has 20,000 columns almost not bad um, so this is the name of the sheet this is the address and you have for example over here formula so if formula is empty then in that cell there's no formula if there is a formula then you see the you see the actual expression of the formula. So you could count formulas, for example. 
you could say okay uh, you could just say sum is na formula and then you get all the um, you get or rather sum is not an a you get all how many formulas there are in your workbook and then you could say well now that i know how many formulas there are in my workbooks i just want to for example analyze those that have formulas because i'm interested into knowing you maybe for some reason you want to do some statistics on uh, which formulas are being used right so this could be a way of reading in all your stuff all your excel sheets counting how, how many formulas there are there and then you could continue doing your stuff you could look into the, the data frames themselves you could see okay which formulas are there is it average is it uh, i don't know whatever formulas there are lookup v lookup uh, x lookup whatever lookup and then you could do your, uh, your your computations and using this syntax well i think i think it's pretty cool because because you don't need to keep this this uh, this data frames you, you can read them one after the next and it's basically the same stuff if you would be doing a loop if you would write a loop you would loop over your data frames that are on disk and you would read one, you would do your stuff, then you would read the next one, you would read the stuff, and then whenever you would need to redo some things, you would need to reread everything. This is basically the same, but in a in a functional way. And now let me let me actually remove this closure here. Because I don't I don't even think I need that. Now this uh wait, what's wrong with you? Andrew oh yeah because i'm using oops yeah this should work so let's let's look again at the ram so now i remove this closure i'm reading or counting the rows immediately uh, it's been going on for 17 minutes so i'm going to stop soon but let's see if this is going to take up more space it shouldn't i don't think it should maybe it's cleaner to only use closures and just execute them when you when you did you need them but i don't know this seems to be i was i think we stopped at 3.3 .3, right so let's see if this is going to somehow uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't go above there's no i don't see any reason why it should take take up more memory but it doesn't seem to be the case so yeah okay so um again this is experimental stuff i'm really making these quick videos as i'm exploring myself so it's not i'm not saying that this is the way to go i'm not saying you should work like that starting tomorrow whatever try it out see if it works for your use cases um, let me know if it works for your use cases i would be very interested to see that i think i i'm sticking a bit more space hmm, okay um, I think I um, I might have some use cases at work where this could be useful, uh, but if you're experimenting with that, if you're trying stuff out, let me know. It would be really great, and uh, don't hesitate to ask me questions because those this video and the video b before were uh, thanks to questions that you asked me. So, you no, know, ask ask ahead if I have time. I I look into it. So um, thanks again, and. Uh, and yeah, let me know if it works for you. This looks looks quite interesting. Mm.